Uh, good evening. Welcome to our town hall meeting for the second quarter. We do have a few seats in the back for any of y'all standing up in the back. Thank you. All right. So uh, this is uh, kind of your opportunity. We'll kind of chat about a few things to start off with, and then we'll open up the microphones for questions. If you're joining us virtually, use the raise hand feature in Zoom uh, to get recognized there. Uh, we just The board just adopted the budget uh, last week. Um, $32.7 million general fund budget. Uh, with that, based on the estimated income, there will be a millage rate rollback. We anticipate that number to be 6.65 for unincorporated and 7.59 for incorporated. Uh, that'll move us from seventh in the state to the sixth lowest in the state. Also, it's a, that's roughly a 5.8% increase over last year. And that is the lowest increase since 2013. So we're very proud of this budget and what we're able to accomplish and also being able to reduce the millage rate. Um, administrative building, the design firm was awarded for that last week as well. And uh, I'm excited to say there's already activity on the design. So uh, we're moving forward and that's very exciting after many, many years of talking about it. Let's see, water resources did want to remind everybody we do have watering restrictions for outdoor watering. So with the heat the last several weeks, and then we kind of had went through a dry spell, uh, we had a real spike in water usage. So we want to remind everybody that odd number addresses are able to water on Tuesday, Thursdays, and Sundays. Even numbered are Monday, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. Uh, drip ir irrigation and hand watering allowed it on any day at any time. If you're gonna use your sprinklers, please follow those guidelines for when you can use them and help us with uh, water usage there. Calls Creek design is underway. This is where we're going from one and a half million gallons a day to three million gallons a day. As, as part of that study, we're also looking at gray water for outdoor watering and also composting for the solids that come out of the treatment plant. Uh, we have a new air and light truck that's under design now. Uh, that was a SPLOS project for the 2021 SPLOS. Uh, Presbyterian Homes has donated $100,000 toward that truck, which means we're able to accelerate that into this next physical year for purchase. So as soon as the specs are done on that, we'll come with pricing to the board, get approval for that contract. Uh, we also have a new engine for station two in Farmington, and that should be delivered sometime in September or October. If you missed our Animal Services Unleashing, you missed a good, good tour there. If you'd like to go out and visit the facility, just give them a call. I'm sure they'll love to have you, but that's another project that's been a long time coming. So we're very excited to see the, the changes made there. And this week we'll be done with all our paving for the year, which is our earliest turn on that. Uh, so it was a little rough there for a while, but uh, a lot of smooth roads in Oconee County now. Hog Mountain Road is completed. Uh, with its lane widening and paving. We'll start on phase two of that, which will be design of a multi-use path from Butler's Crossing all the way to Lake Willbrook Road, and hopefully be able to start construction that in the next few years. So uh, with that, we'll open it up to any questions anybody may have or any comments if anybody else wants to say. See, do I need to stay up here or? <clears throat> yeah, so Jeff Hood, Julian Court, Watkinsville. Um, I, at the debate at Bethel Baptist Church a few weeks ago with the mayor of Watkinsville and the city council, I think it was Brian Broderick that made the comment when a question came up about does he foresee a bypass around the city of Watkinsville? And he said, well, and I think I'm quoting him correctly, that before he sees a bypass around the city of Watkinsville, 
come to fruition, he thinks first would have to have a bypass around Bishop. So I know that's kind of been out there, but, uh, and they've started widening 441 in Morgan County. I know it's coming toward Oconee, but what is the latest on widening of 441 in Oconee timeline? And also how do they get around Bishop? The route around Bishop has not been determined yet, but there are some conversations uh, going on with different folks trying to figure that out. So um, we do have a little bit of time before the construction reach, reaches Bishop. Uh, so I think we'll have a solution uh, figured out before that, before it comes, before construction reaches that area. Uh, so th there's a lot of factors to consider and a lot of opinions to get though, on that one. Let's see, another road-related question. Um, John, you do a good job of keeping us updated on the um, roundabouts, and I know that there's going to be some coming on, um, <clears throat> I guess it's Hog Mountain Road, and are we still in the, uh, I guess, the engineering phase of those? Yes, so the one at Snows Mill and Rocky Branch near the school, uh, I think they're on final concept development there and there's, they're also working a little bit behind developing that one with the one at Ray's church uh, so we should see some activity on that hopefully in the next month or two with some some additional information flowing out um, based on the statistics I'm looking at and unless the engineering firm comes back with some something different uh, I would anticipate the recommendation from administration and, and the chairman would be to close Cold Springs on that section permanently. Uh, we're not gonna make a final decision until that engineering uh, process is further along, but it's, it's been very effective at, uh, uh, for safety reasons at the intersection on 53. And, and that was actually one of my next questions was Cold Springs Road, the cut through, because I was out there Sunday and someone's moved the barrel, some of the barrels, and I was told that there are some people cutting through so just kind of an fyi yeah i noticed that as well so we'll go back out there and replace them um, or remove them to or put them in the correct spot so uh, we, we do have a, a couple folks who uh, will pay that toll to get out and move the barrel so they can get through so listen <clears throat> also wanted to ask you gentlemen about something in eastville on malcolm bridge road you're probably aware if you go through that area that several years ago, the home burned and it actually partially burned. I guess they saved the front part of it, but it's still kind of the, the rubble still partially standing. And just out of curiosity, in a case like that, and I don't know the homeowner or the property owner and the circumstance, but it's just been sitting there and it could be a hazard. But what is the county's policy on, on something like that? Yeah, we made attempts to find the property owner and haven't been very successful. I'm not sure our codes allow us to go in and do anything. And that's probably going to fall under property maintenance code that we may be looking at in the future. Uh, but I drove by there. The other, they got a flag out there, too, that's in really bad disrepair. I think I'm just going to stop and take it down. But <laughs> Nobody calls 911 on me anyway. So, um, but we, we are, I noticed that as well. We'll be taking another look at it and see if we can get that eyesore taken care of. And the Eagle Tavern, I know that um, there was a report about some more funding from Spelos to, to um, repair, do the repairs, I think, on the structure of the foundation. But are we, from what you're seeing or hearing, are we getting close to that being finalized and it reopening? Yeah, so we're done with all the foundation part, the brickwork and the supports are in. So then there's some cosmetic replacement of wood around the outside that we anticipate uh, coming over in the next few weeks. So um, not sure of an uh, exact timeline, uh, but we think we found all the problems and those have been addressed or will be addressed with this final uh, additions. And, and I only ask this next question because it was reported in the Oconee Enterprise in May. And that is uh, Costco possibly coming to Oconee County over near Hobby Lobby is just because, again, it was 
in the legal organ of this county. Is there anything you can tell us or update us as far as Costco? No, we really don't comment on economic development projects, either active or inactive. I can say that website's been up for quite a while. It's really not new, new news that Costco's had interest in Oconee County in the past. Okay, and I know that fam or Dollar General going to Bishop, that's been talked about. Is, is, that a, is that a city of Bishop or town of Bishop item, or is that, does that fall into the county? That's totally under purview of the city council and bishop. Okay, so <clears throat> I was going to ask for an update on when it they may break ground, but okay, that's all I got right now. So thank you. We do expect uh, some activity at Union Church and State Route 53. That will be a joint project between Department of Transportation and Oconee County. Uh, so they're doing their final studies on that. So we hope to have some documents produced in the next few months on that and get that project underway. Um, we also have an active project study going on for 441 at La Vista Road. And uh, that preliminary planning is underway now. So we, we could see some activity in that in this calendar year as well to get that situation taken care of. And we're being, we'll be doing a technical rating on our roads. We'll be bringing in some kind of radar or something and they'll be figuring out depth and quality of asphalt to get a true uh, subjective view of the roadways. We hope to bring that back with a paving program and kind of talk about how many roads we need to be doing and comparing that to what we got. And um, again, we've mentioned before T-SPLOS, that's going to be instrumental in how quickly we can tackle uh, some of these road problems that we have, as well as uh, some multi-use uh, trails and, and intersection improvements that uh, will come out of the reviews. So phase two of, uh, they call it Mars Hill, but it's actually experiment station from Butler's Crossing to the 441, 441 overpass. Uh, there were some outstanding permits they were waiting on from EPD. Those have been issued. So we expect uh, a final clearance for the contractor to start within the next three weeks. Uh, so hopefully you'll see them out there and uh, get started on that project. I, I believe it's a two year project. so. We're all excited to see them get started, but just understand it's going to be not a lot of fun for a couple of years while they get things worked out. Um, there's actually a phase three to that, which will be from the bridge into Watkinsville. And I think we have some preliminary design done on that. Uh, the city of Watkinsville would like to take a look at that and make some adjustments on how they would like that corridor to look. So we'll be uh, releasing those plans to, to the city to kind of make the changes they need and then assist in any way we can to keep that funding uh, or move it uh, quicker, move it out quicker to get the construction done on it. Yes, so the, the project at uh, Edsbridge Road uh, coming off the 10 loop, and then the turn lane going left onto the connector toward Lowe's. That project is complete. We have some additional signage to do, um, but where we were having, you know, two or three accidents a week, I think we've had one since the construction was completed. And I think that'll be addressed once the, all the signage is complete. So, um, and it does make a difference. If you go there through rush hour, that lane is not backing up like it was. Um, to, so it keeps traffic moving. So we're, we're excited to have that one done as well. Speed limits, we've had a lot of comments about speed limits in the county. So we have several roads that we've done some 
uh, data collection on. We've had that reviewed by the Department of Transportation, and then we'll be produce, we'll have some internal meetings uh, between staff and the sheriff's office about kind of the next steps, and then bring that uh, to the board for a policy decision on how to handle those roads. And even in the future, um, trying to get counts and speed studies done to see the best method of uh, setting speed limits for the county roads. Anyone virtually on there? So this is your opportunity. There's only a short line at the microphone. If you want to make your way to the microphone, you can. Uh, if you just go to microphone, state your name and force, and we'll be glad to have it. Good evening, I'm Pam Hendricks, and I live at 1151 Thornwood Drive. And I have, um, just been, I've come up with an idea. I really think our county should be thinking about a very nice public park over in the Epps Bridge Road area. Has that come up? I feel like right now is the time to kind of like pick the location and because it isn't built out completely. Um, I was just up in Social Circle on Monday of this week and they've put in a new friendship park and they um, actually have a, a small little amphitheater where they, they're having some live music where people can just bring blankets and chairs and sit on the lawn. I think that would be so good for the Epps Bridge Road area just because it's really intensely commercial and just having a place that people can kind of chill out, maybe go for their lunch hour, maybe go take a walk. Um, and then also have some public events. Um, and this really came about because I'm in the Daughters of the American Revolution and we do our Constitutional Day celebration every year, September 17th. And we had really thought this year, um, you know, we were using the place that the Oconee State Bank is, the new building is now in that location. So we've started thinking a little broader and thinking maybe we should target over in the Epps Bridge Road area, but there's not a good place to do anything like that right now. So I would just encourage the county to think about a par public park in the Epps Bridge Road area. Thank you. We, um, it's always been a debate whether you do small park at parks versus the big parks. Um, and we're, um, land prices are very, very steep over there. So that, that's, part of that, the barriers to doing that. Uh, but we'll definitely go back and take a look and see if there's any uh, anything we might be able to do. But it, it's gonna be a, a tough mountain to climb. We, we are, like I said, we're moving toward the construction of the administrative building. So there'll be a nice green area there for your event if you wanna head that way once that's done. So should be plenty of parking and a lot of room there as well. Yes, ma'am, if you can figure that out, we'll make it Pam Hendricks Park. So. Let's see, Jeff Hood again. So <clears throat> there was an interesting story, I think it was last Friday in the Augusta Chronicle and then the Associated Press picked up on it. And as you may know, in Augusta, Columbia County and Richmond County are apparently going to split off as far as their judicial circuit and the district attorney. And since um, Deborah Gonzalez was elected here last year, uh, there's been talk because of philosophy so different between Clark and Oconee that maybe the same thing should be ha should happen here. And I and I asked this question I'm going to pose because in the story in the AP and a Chronicle, Diane Baggett, Oconee County's commissioner, communications manager, who I believe is in your office, commented on this story saying that 
residents of the Republican dominated Oconee County area don't share Gonzalez's philosophy, which has been well documented. So this is just a general question. I know you guys don't really have the say so, but you have a lot of influence because um, ultimately I believe it goes to the legislation in Georgia or the legislature uh, and our local guys are obviously Houston Gaines and Marcus Wiedauer. Um, and then of course, Governor Kemp who lives close by but just curious, any of you that might want to speak on that topic, uh, would you want to see a split? Again, I know you don't have the say-so, but you do have some influence, I would think, on our politicians that do have the say-so. I guess I'll say there, there, there was a lot of uh, comments or questions about how to split a judicial district. Um, there's processes you go through. Uh, through the state legislature. Once those processes are complete, then we'll look at the data and see if it makes sense to, to move forward with that. Um, I mean, I really don't know. You know, when, when constituents are concerned about something, we definitely take a look at it. There's been no decisions made or anything along that line, but it's it's definitely something that's in the in the minds of the of the people out this way. Probably what I'd say, I, I could probably find some disagreements with Ms. Gonzalez, but she won an election fair and square. I heard that I got stopped when I was jogging. When are we going to get out of the circuit? I said there was an election. That's generally how you deal with those things. And, and some of the people that stopped me lost. But they want to change the rules. Let's get out. Well, I, I would say to people, you, get, you have a shot at five people up here during an election. You have a shot at her during an election. And you, 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 to me, just we got to get out. Well, you had a shot at the election. They were candidates. And so to me, you know, I, I think it's a lot more difficult to get out of a circuit than I don't like the results, so we're going to get out. I'd rather say to her, Deborah, I don't agree with you. She and I had a conversation that I think she'd admit to before she took office. And I, and I said up front what my concerns were. Now, I don't know about other people, if they bothered to go talk to her and say, or did they just say, let's get out of this, the circuit? I, don't, I personally don't like it that way. I mean, I, I have had to use the DA's office because I was in law enforcement. So I, I think I, got, I know a little bit about law enforcement. And what I think the DA's office does, I, some of the people that, that talk to me have never even didn't know the previous DA. But we want to get out of it. So I, I personally, I don't like to do it that way. I think that's why this country has elections. And I would, I would say until that day comes, somebody out there that wants to run against her, run against her. But don't take this, you know, well, we just got to get out because we got a different philosophy. Well, there's probably people got a different philosophy than me. I'm sure they do. But, you know, and I'll come up for re-election if I choose to do that next in the, in the primary. So that's how I feel about it. And I'm not going to dance around the polls. So I think you settle these things at election. And if it got so bad, then, you know, maybe we can, we can look at it. But I, I would say to people, go talk to her and say, I disagree with you. 
I mean, that's, and I told her, I said, Deborah, I, there's some people out here that are concerned about your positions on some things. And I named them. Now, did those people that are talking to you, asking you to ask the question, did, did they go talk to her? I don't know either. But I think that's what you ought to go do. And I think if, if we felt as a commission, we, we don't have any problem going talking to her. So that, that's my opinion on it. Well, Chuck, I do want to say thank you very much for that response. And I will say, actually, I didn't talk to uh, Michael or Lee in the media or even Tim Bryant. or No one really asked me to ask certain questions. that I just kind of came up with them on my own because I like politics. But I, I will say this, since it's a town hall, I'm very disappointed that uh, your point that the citizens of this county did not show up for that election. I know it was a standalone election, it was, you know, special election, and there was some confusion at first because they thought it was going to be lumped with maybe the senatorial or the presidential, and it didn't happen. And, and I supported James Chafin myself. I mean, I'll just tell you, I like what he stood for. I donated to his campaign and worked for him. And, and it was bitterly disappointing that the people in Oconee County just didn't show up to vote, just like they're not here tonight. So just to be candid. But I do like your take on uh, maybe the better route is to just have a conversation with her. And I am a member of the Oconee GOP, so I will mention that to Kathy Hurley, the, the chair of the party. And maybe that's what we should do is invite Deborah Gonzalez to come to a meeting. We meet the fourth Monday night of every month and just, you know, instead of trying to go the difficult route of breaking off from Clark is to have her come to one of our meetings and then just ask questions, have some dialogue. So that's kind of where that is, but thank you very much for your insight. And, and I also appreciate your, your uh, you know, willing to ask the question. I, I, but I do think in all fairness, um, and, and I say this because I was, the lead investigator on a murder case. And I sat with Harry Gordon and Jerry Brown. And it, it, it you know, you get a, an understanding, you, you're, you're dealing with a case that's a death penalty case. Now I had to do that. And in my testimony and other law enforcement testimony, those individuals, you, you got an accused who could lose their life. So I, I think I understand the role of the DA and how important it is. All I ask is, you know, and I said it to, to folks, you know, this country is built on elections. You know, sometimes you don't get what you, your person doesn't always win. And, but you, you, you work with the system. And I, and I think that the right thing to do would be to engage her like, like we're doing here tonight to try and if there's some things that can be resolved. You know, elected officials, you know, if you don't talk to them, you really don't know that person. You know, you, you, it's going to be difficult to get things accomplished. And let me say this. This is probably one of the most diverse judicial circuits in the state of Georgia. With Clark County and Oconee County. Uh, yes, there's some difference. But there have been differences since I got in law enforcement. That hasn't changed. There, there were things, you know, Clark County was different than Oconee County. Always was, always has been. But I, I, I would ask you, she's sitting right there, so you can ask her before she leaves, give her an invite 
to go talk. And, and that it doesn't mean you're going to agree. But I, but I do think that it's the right thing. It's the fair thing to do. And uh, I would do that if something was happening. I, I would be up front with her and just say, I, we just don't, dis we're going to have to agree to disagree on this. And uh, I mean, I, I think that's the right thing to do. So I, I applaud you for that. And, uh, but invite her. Regardless of parties, I think we get we get too much into this party stuff, but down here at the local issue, I don't deal with what goes on in D.C. You heard what the man was talking about. Round, I, I haven't heard a senator or a congressman talk about it during roundabout, but we do. So don't let her get away before you invite her. Thank you, and <clears throat> I did not realize she was here. I, I'd never met Deborah, so I will definitely talk to her once this event concludes. And thank you, Chuck, for uh, all that insight. I do appreciate it. Hey, uh, Dan McGee, Lock Lemon Circle. Uh, I want to thank you all again. I think at the budget meeting, I think two members of the public came was one of them, but uh, thank you for not passing on the, the fees um, to the school system, use park facilities. I'm concerned that uh, we're gonna lose some low income kids, um, children of single parents, uh, families that won't be able to afford the uh, additional fee add on the football, baseball track. I think at least it's about $30 per, depending on the sport. Um, may not sound like a lot, but if a single parent four or five kids, you know, going out for football, track, football, lacrosse, whatever. So I'm concerned the school system passing it on. Um, I'm actually volunteering to be part of the new uh, Coney Park Foundation. And maybe we can raise some scholarship money. Don't want to lose one kid playing a sport because the Board of Ed is sticking it to us. So uh, I hope you all have talked about that. But uh, we do have some low-income kids in the, in the county. Don't want to lose them playing in a sport uh, on county property. Uh, other thing is uh, any economic development news. I saw uh, Athens just scored a Texas healthcare tech company. Uh, anything going on? Uh, Commissioner Hardin, I'm praying you're an economic development expert of your history and banking. So hope we can bring some stuff to the table. But anything going on? IDA, Chamber of Commerce. I know Barrow is booming, uh, getting international firms looking at stuff on 316. But do you have any news, tech, biotech? Anything economic development going on here in the county? We got the schools, we got the location, we're next door UGA. Anything going on with uh, recruitment of uh, companies? We do have our economic uh, development uh, strategy that we adopted, I think, a few months ago. So we have the Chamber of Commerce out actively trying to implement that strategy. Uh, there's no, no announcement that we're willing to make at this point. We don't really make comments on active or inactive uh, economic development things. We are in a great place and we're in a position where we don't have to take just anything. So we're not out begging for any particular type of thing. So we're, we're, we're sitting in a real good spot and uh, we expect some good things to be happening. Um, economic development. Uh, yeah, it's really interesting, you know, the, the, the caterpillar type uh, projects are far and few in between. Uh, so um, I know that uh, there's every community in this country is buying for those types of projects. Um, the chairman is correct. Uh, we are very fortunate uh, in the situation we're in. Uh, being having Athens as a neighbor with our the University of Georgia. And we do, uh, I think with the infrastructure that's being put in as far as the upgrades with Highway 316 will be a benefit going forward. I know that uh, there are uh, things that are going on that sometimes we're the last ones to know. 
uh, not on purpose, but there's uh, people who are interested in this community. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, I'm not sure we'll ever see another caterpillar type industry come to Ocon Canyon. I'm not sure we would want something that large, uh, but that Orkin track is still there. Uh, so there is, you know, the availability of land uh, that if something did come there. Uh, but I think the backbone of this community and most communities are the small businesses. And uh, I'm excited that the, whenever we have a ribbon cutting uh, that the Chamber of Commerce puts on as far as uh, small businesses. But I think that's where the, the growth in this community is with those types of businesses. And, uh, and I'm just, I'm real excited about our future with those types of uh, uh, small businesses coming in. Uh, but you're right, there's, uh, there's a lot going on out there in other communities. Uh, we don't have an I-85, we don't have an I-20, uh, which is probably, uh, is like a, you know, a double-edged sword. There's a good side and a bad side of that. So, uh, but I'm, I'm very uh, excited about the prospects of Highway 316 with the upgrades that will take place over the next few years. And, and uh, hopefully we'll see some, you know, activity in that area. But that's a good question, Dan, appreciate that. Hey guys, I'm new with this. Uh, I'm Mike Griffith. I live uh, right across that. Hey Jeff, good to see you. I live over there at 1172 Cold Tree in Coldwater Creek. And uh, I've emailed you guys, a couple of you guys, uh, a question about speed limits. First though, I'd like to just acknowledge what a great job um, I think you guys do and, and how fortunate I feel uh, to live here in Oconee County. Um, I'm a reporter that's lived in a lot of different places around the country, a lot of great school districts, uh, around a lot of great universities. And, um, you know, the controlled growth that I see here, the school district, the quality of life, uh, just the, the tenor, the feel when you're in Oconee County, it, it's fantastic. And uh, I think people that reside here and certainly you guys uh, can read the niche magazine ratings. I mean, it's number one here and number one there. And we're talking about national ratings, not just state ratings. And, uh, you know, so just a remarkable place to live, a wonderful place to live and um, really appreciate the responsible growth that I've seen around me just in the two years that I've lived here. And uh, just can't say enough good things. So I, I was a little hesitant to come and complain about something, but I, I look at a situation that I think um, kind of snuck up on us. You know, when you just mentioned a moment ago that, you know, sometimes you don't know everything. You're not everywhere. No, one's, no one can know everything that's going on. And certainly as the community grows, uh, there's some unintended consequences. And I think about traffic. And when you're in a growing community, there's more cars, the high school gets a little bigger. And suddenly, I mean, a moment ago, we were talking about being excited about Highway 316, and I'm unexcited about Whippoorwill High Highway and, and Union Church Highway. We're going 50 miles an hour with high school kids on tight roads. And now we've built up all these new subdivisions that have entrances in them. And you're trying to pull out, that's a dangerous place. Um, potential for head-on collisions, T-bones. We're talking fatalities. We're not talking about grocery store public fender benders. We're talking about people losing their lives potentially if we're not able to slow down these roads in areas where we've had growth. Now, I, I look and see the countryside, and I, I'll be honest, I'm a little biased towards this side of the county. You know, there's pastures and cows, and I grew up out in the county riding my bicycle on the county roads, and, and my kids were able to do that too. But my goodness, you can't even walk on the side of these roads between neighborhoods. You go tell your kid to go play in the subdivision 100 yards down the road, you got to drive them. They can't walk safely beside the road. I'm just as guilty as anybody else. I see a 55 speed limit, I'm probably going 63. I'm, somebody pull me over, I'm probably going to get a ticket here. No, seriously, the Oconee County Sheriff's Department, they've been, they've been polite, you know, they get a warning here and there. But, but if we're setting a speed limit at 50, and we're asking 16-year-old drivers that are going around tight curves, late for school, late for practice, eager to get home, around residential neighborhoods with kids on bicycles, it's not, it's not if but when. One of the things I reported on was a motorsports. I was a motorsports rider. I'd go to these stock car races, and I'd sit there, and I'll just like everybody else, you know what I'm waiting on. 
I'm waiting on a crash, man. I'm waiting on a crash. It's not if, but when. You put a certain number of cars out there, speed is the number one component to safety or unsafe conditions. And so I put this in before you just because I'm seeing this growth. I'm seeing these subdivisions pop up. We got a new one now uh, off of Union Church, Stonewood, I think it's called, some beautiful half million dollar homes. And I'm saying here's another 60 or 70 homes, another 100 cars that are going in and out two, three times a day. And I do appreciate that after I wrote an email that you all responded and I saw some signs put up to let people know the speeds that they were going and bring that to folks' attention that, oh my gosh, I didn't realize how fast I, I sometimes I'm guilty of that. I didn't realize how fast I was going. I'll tell you what, when I go through Bishop and I see 35, I slow down. When I go through some of these little towns and it says 25, and it tells me they care about their little town. We're going to be careful here. We're going to slow everybody down when you come through our town, right? Because we care about our citizens. I know you guys care about your citizens. I guess my question is this. Why wouldn't you lower the speed limits? Why are the speed limits so high, so close to a school, through a residential zone. And I'm sure there's a good explanation. So I thought I would come and ask. I'm on our HOA board. People have talked to me about it. And I said, well, I'll just go ask these guys. So here I am. And thank you for your time tonight. So in the official code of Georgia, there's one code section that says you cannot exceed the posted speed limit. However, there are 25 to 30 laws that tell you how to enforce that one law. And part of that drives with how fast that people are actually going on the road. There's something called the 85th, 85th percentile. So they put markers out there, they track your speeds, and if everybody on the road is going 50 miles an hour, in order to enforce the speed along that road, you have to set your speed limit to that. So a lot of it's driven by the citizens already designated uh, traffic pattern, how they, how they act on the roadway. So that's what we're trying to balance the posted speed limit versus the ability to enforce that. Because if we go right now and we drop the speed limit without the proper studies, then the sheriff's office no longer has jurisdiction to run radar on that road. So there's no enforcement unless you happen to have a state trooper cut, cutting through there. And they're not staffed up enough to cover the county roads on a consistent basis. Um, so that's what we're balanced. We, the signs you saw out there were not just post allowing you to see your speed, they were recording your speed. So we've taken that data, we've turned it over to DOT, they've done some work on it. We're having internal discussions among the staff, we're bringing in the sheriff's office to kind of balance out, you know, we, we technically could go out and put a sign that says 25 miles an hour, but there's nothing the sheriff's office can do about to enforce it. So that's what we're trying to balance enforcement uh, with the safety factor as well. So, and, and once we have a better understanding of where we're at, we, we can start talking to, it's not gonna be an easy change, but we, we've got to get the state legislature involved at some point on reducing the number of uh, code sections that deal with how you enforce it. And all this goes back to speed traps in the early days of radar and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so that's what we're trying to balance out, but we are working on it. We'll have some meetings in the next, uh, next few weeks and then hopefully come to the board and we'll kind of talk about it and say, do we want to put a 45 knowing we can't enforce it or do we want to follow these steps and try to get to a 45, so. Uh, I appreciate you, uh, you know, bringing that to our attention. Uh, I travel a lot of roads and it's just like, I know somebody, uh, you see a tree and you go by it 10 times a day, you just, you forget that tree is there. And when traveling the Union Church Road, I just didn't realize it was 50 miles an hour. Uh, and you're right, people have a tendency if it's 50, then they're gonna go 60. And that's entirely too fast uh, for that uh, stretch of highway. Uh, so I appreciate you bringing it to attention. I think also, Mr. Chairman, aren't we also looking at other county roads as well besides that one? So there's other areas in the county could needs attention as well. So we appreciate your, your uh, input. And, uh, and anytime, you know, that's what emails are good for is bringing things to our attention. 
uh, and I appreciate you doing that. So, John, at the last town hall meeting, <clears throat> I had a question about the rezone across from Quick Trip. And I remember the comment or response was that you couldn't have a response uh, to a current rezone. And now that that ship has sailed and it's been denied, uh, just it's interesting in the community it's kind of polarizing there were people that wanted that shopping center and people that didn't and I I was not at the meeting but I did watch the entire meeting when the vote was cast on zoom and I know when you guys vote and it was three to one that you don't give a reason on how you vote but since it's passed can would any of you be willing to tell us why you voted the way you did So, so the property owner put us on notice of a possible constitutional violation. So they have up to 30 days after our minutes are approved to file a lawsuit. So it's not to the county's advantage to make any comments right now. Once all that's kind of settled down, I don't mind talking to you about a little more about what my thinking was. And I don't think any, you know, we have, we have to be real careful. We've got to protect uh, our ability to make decisions like that. and be able to back them up if if there is a legal challenge to that. So um, we've been asked by the the count our attorney not to not to get any details with it right now. But maybe the next quarter we can talk about it a little more. Anyone virtually? All right, we'll give you a few more seconds to decide if you have another question. Very good. Well, thank you so much for taking time to come out. We appreciate your uh, attendance. And like I said, we, we are available by email and phone call anytime. If You don't have to wait till the next town hall meeting. Uh, but thank you so much for showing up. Thank you.